So we're going to be talking about the elements with more than one possible charge. Here I have a periodic table showing you where the metals and nonmetals are on the periodic table. Now, something you need to know about the metals is that metals are always cations. And something you need to know about nonmetals is that they're always anions. Whenever we write the formula for an ionic compound, we always put the metal first and the nonmetal second. When we talk about our elements that have more than one possible charge, we're actually talking about a subsection of the metals. We're looking at the transition metals and the post-transition metals. So these two areas on the periodic table are where we find the elements that have more than one possible charge. So we're going to go through and look at some of the possible charges by group. Scandium up here at the top commonly comes with a 3 plus charge. Yttrium also commonly comes with a 3 plus charge. Titanium commonly comes with a 2 plus or a 3 plus charge. Remember, all of these are going to be cations because they are metals. Vanadium commonly comes with a, either a 2 plus or a 3 plus charge. Chromium commonly comes with a 2 plus or 3 plus charge as well. Manganese commonly comes with a 2 plus or a 3 plus charge, and technetium commonly comes with a 2 plus charge. Iron commonly either has a 2 plus or a 3 plus charge. Cobalt, again, 2 plus or 3 plus, those tend to be very common. Nickel often has a 2 plus charge. Palladum often has a 2 plus charge as well. And platinum often has a 2 plus or a 4 plus charge. Copper often comes with either a 1 plus or a 2 plus charge. And gold comes in the versions of 1 plus or 3 plus. Cadmium often comes with a 2 plus. And mercury is a little interesting here. So technically, this one is mercury with a 1 plus charge but it doesn't come by itself when it has a one plus charge. It comes in a group of two. So together that would be a two plus charge. Or mercury can come on its own and have a two plus charge. And gallium has a two plus charge or a three plus charge. And indium can often have a one plus, a two plus, or a three plus charge. And then thallium we can see here has a one plus or three plus charge. That brings us to tin and lead, and both of these commonly come with a 2 plus or a 4 plus charge. And so that's just kind of a quick summary of some of the charges that those transition metals or post-transition metals have. So now we're going to talk about our Arabic numerals and how that relates to our Roman numerals. When we are keeping track of the names for these transition metals, which have more than one charge, we actually use Roman numerals. And so titanium here, there's two versions of it. There's titanium with a 2 plus charge or titanium with a 3 plus charge. Now when titanium has a 2 plus charge, we call that titanium 2. And we write the 2 in Roman numerals inside of parentheses. For titanium with a 3 plus charge, we have written the 3 inside of parentheses as Roman numerals. So this is called titanium 3. With iron 2, we're writing again the charge as Roman numerals, so 2, inside a parenthesis. So this is iron 2, and this is iron 3, with the 3 being that plus 3 charge. Copper here, we've got our two versions, copper 1 and copper 2. And tin comes as either tin 2 or tin 4. There are some exceptions. So there are some transition metals and post-transition metals that absolutely never will have more than one version. And we only are using Roman numerals because we have elements that have more than one possible charge. However, silver, zinc, and aluminum only ever will have one possible charge. So silver is always one plus. Zinc is always 2 plus, and aluminum is always 3 plus. Do not use Roman numerals with these. 
So this is kind of an easy way of remembering what charge those three have. You can notice that they are in a staircase with silver, zinc, and aluminum. And so their charges are one plus, two plus, three plus, and it just goes up the staircase. Don't use Roman numerals with those. So here's an example of a compound made using silver. We have silver nitrate. And I want you to notice that I just wrote the word silver and I didn't put any Roman numerals in. I'm not denoting or showing any charge. We just know that silver has a one plus charge. Here's an example of a compound using iron. And so I've, I'm showing the two different compounds and the two different charges with this iron here. And so we've got iron two oxide and its formula is FeO. And iron two oxide, the iron has a two plus charge. Hence why we wrote a two right up here. On this other side, we have iron three oxide. Its formula is Fe2O3. This, these irons here have a three plus charge. Hence why it is called iron three oxide. Also notice that it affects the properties and characteristics of these compounds. So iron two oxide with its two plus charge is black and iron three oxide with its three plus charge is red. One common mistake students tend to make when writing the formulas for compounds where you can have more than one possible charge and where you're using the Roman numerals is they tend to forget that this is the charge. This number does not tell you anything other than the charge. It, the mistake students often make is they think it tells them something about how many they have. Pay careful attention. You have two irons in iron three oxide, not three. There's only one iron in iron two oxide. And so hopefully by noticing that and paying attention to it, you can avoid that pitfall.